Secretariat and its affiliated programs. This session will aim to discuss what role think tanks can play in strengthening the BIMSTEC. We now request Dr. Sri Radha Datta, VIF Chair, Session 5, and our distinguished panelists, Dr. Deepak Prakash Bhatt, Founding Chairperson of Nepal Center for Security Governance, Major General Binoj Basnayat, uh, Sharing Penjo Royal Institute for Governance and Strategic Studies, Mr. Zilur Rahman, Executive Director, Center for Governance Studies, Mr. Pankaj Hazarika, Director, Connectivity and Security from the BIMSTEC Secretariat, to please take their seats on the dais. Uh, I request all speakers uh, to finish their presentations uh, in below 10 minutes so that the flow can be open to the audience too. Uh, we will keep the protocol of the chair ringing the bell once at 9 p minutes and twice at 10 minutes. I now hand over the proceedings to the chair. Welcome to the penultimate session. Uh, sitting at VIF and organizing this BIMSTEC conference, of course, this particular session is of unique relevance to this. Uh, while in India or any of the BIMSTEC countries, we've never seen really a framework of uh, assessment in terms of uh, think tank and their uh, influence or input in the policy making process. Uh, but over the years, and having been part of a think tank for the last 20 years, uh, I've certainly seen a lot of, uh, you know, um, interaction between the policy uh, making pol uh, policy makers as well as think tank in the recent years. Uh, particularly, I think for BIMSTEC, this has been uh, right at the beginning of us, it's 22 years old, but in the last two years, and I don't know how many of you have been able to see this document my younger colleagues have put together, which tells you the amount of momentum that the think tanks have taken on themselves in the last two years. Uh, certainly, it's a top-heavy approach as of yet. Uh, the governments have been in every country, especially India, of course, we know, uh, has been uh, pushing this regional uh, organization and its other, you know, whatever comes with it, the core, the core uh, areas. Uh, but it's also a fact that think tanks, while there were seven think tanks which are originally identified with the BIMSTEC process, but like we are sitting in VIF, there's several other think tanks in India and elsewhere who've been part of the BIMSTEC process in the last two years. Uh, more importantly, of course, we know that in India, Bangladesh, uh, there are several think tanks who are part of the engagement, but uh, also Nepal and Bhutan, we've seen how universities have been part of it, because I guess there are not that many think tanks, but again, that process has, uh, you know, kind of, green traction over the years. And let me just look at how think tank is relevant. Of course, as I said, it's part of the you know, process where we hope that we are providing inputs and feedback to the main core issues that have been identified. But more importantly, and I think what has you know, come across the last one and a half days of interaction, it is several issues which is impossible for the government to take forward. So it actually falls on the think tanks to take these small, to do the detailing, the fine details which are required out of these four, 14 core issues. And another thing that I've noticed in BIMSTEC is that because it was a top-heavy, top-down approach, there was very little awareness about BIMSTEC, not only within BIMSTEC itself, but also in the international community. And I think that has very slowly, I would say, there hasn't been a substantial increase, but the fact of the interaction of the think tanks has actually started this awareness. You know, there has been a certain amount of momentum, at least within the countries themselves, still very much elite-based, I would say, uh, confined to rooms like this, but I think that's what we are here to discuss, and I think I would, um, uh, I mean, when we sum up, we'll discuss this. But the point that I think Dr. Gupta suggested yesterday, and I, I think we discussed at uh, the dining um, uh, time, that we would all have a WhatsApp group here, so that it's not only a think tanks we start interacting, but also the individual expertise comes to the table. And I think what we'll do 
do once the group is in place, we'll kind of identify sectors uh, and not, I mean, we've always worked in silos. I think that's breaking down now, that we should now kind of, you know, spread ourselves a little more and uh, take the process forward. And I think we'll do that at the summing up process also. So I'm not going to take up too much of more time. I'm going to request uh, Dr. Deepak um, Prakash Bhatt to begin with his presentation. Um, as mentioned, 10 minutes for each of the speakers, and then we'll go to the Q&A. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, VIF and BIMSTIC uh, for organizing this event and inviting yeah. me for make a presentation here. Many things in the last sessions have been discussed and many things we agreed that how we should move forward in the days to come. While keeping the mind, the things in mind that regionalism and the globalization are not contradictory at some point, but yes, of course, the globalization we have not discussed in, in these kind of forums how to pursue, uh, pursue these mechanisms or the technology. But in regionalism or the sub-regional forums, we have been talking about this. Since the Westphalian notion of his nation state, these kind of uh, many words we have fought, many words in the different parts of the world have been fought. But while talking about the South Asia and the Southeast Asia and mixing both in BIMSTEC is something different. And where we talk about the civilizational uh, roots and the nations have emerged in a different form uh, is to uh, raise in, in a different way, not to countering the globalization in its form and, and regionalism and the sub regionalism in its ongoing form. But while looking from the security perspective, while talking about the regional security, there are traditional security notions and non traditional security notions. What the Bari Buzan was talking about the securitization of the state and and of course, the Mahabubul Haq and Amartya Sen has talked about the hu human face of the security and human security perspective. That's where the, the cross-cutting issues are there. And uh, from uh, first to last session, there are many common issues we have discussed. At the conclusion, uh, as uh, Director Gupta was talking and almost concluding the and, and raising the question in a form that uh, shaping the uh, particular session, like how the universities, think tanks, regional uh, regional networks, and the network of the networks can be framed. And I'm not formally uh, familiar with the, what BIMSEC is exactly doing and its permanent working group and the, uh, the, the formed groups are working on. But what I think is like uh, the whole the process should be most inclusive as it is raised, like, you know, the size of the population is not always the matter. Size of the geography is not the matter. If if we are talking about the member states, then there are commonalities and there are challenges, whatever the size of the population and the size of the geography. But the challenges as posed in a different way. As till the moment in the cyber world, we are talking about the, the particular type of internet. But while talking from the cyber security uh, or, or the uh, internet sovereignty, what will happen in the next couple of years when the quantum cyber world will be functional? So, I mean, this is only the question. And, and what I see is that the connectivity is in terms of uh, hard issues or the hard security issues, they can be put in the ba back burner and, and we can move forward in mostly the soft issues like in the disaster uh, related issues where the man-made or the nature-made issues can be, uh, can be separated and the mechanisms can be set for uh, a collective uh, vision and the, and the work and the network. And similarly, the universities can work and the think tanks can work and the, of course the activism, not only the, those who are radicalizing, but the what for the others, or what others are doing, what other networks groups and the what activists in different uh, countries are going. So n making a network of the network or something like that can be effective in, in this uh, capacity building area or, or something like that uh, where the challenges have been posed in terms of connectivity also. And Yes, of course, the uh, migration has, uh, or the demographic changes in the, in the region has a particular uh, question has been raised. Either it's India, Bangladesh, Nepal, uh, India, or, or uh, Myanmar and Bangladesh, or anywhere elsewhere, or in the region. 
So that is a big question. With that, that we can, and, and the question have been raised about the illegal migration, legal migration, or the labor workers' migration, or uh, many forms are there. We have not talked about the, the movement of the people. Earlier, I think so, the, uh, for estate, it's always been a big question there, movement of the people, because so every individual is not only the individual. It's moving with the technology or the advanced technology. So, and of course, while talking about the blue economy, yes, there could be a, a framework, and countries like Nepal and Bhutan or the landlocked countries do, who don't have, uh, don't directly have a, you know, the uh, direct link at the uh, offshore and the sea, then then there can be a, because they are not pro, uh, directly extracting the ocean resources, then what will be the rule and the, gate, uh, you know, the norms for the, the countries like uh, landlocked countries where they have uh, access from the unclosed UN Convention, but if we are looking or uh, moving forward, then we have to review or we have to make a position to review that international framework, and then only we can move uh, uh, move forward in the in this regional framework. So I think uh, that is one point from my side, and all these things are yes, of course we are talking in in a regional way, but the international and the geo strategic and geo economic and the political agendas are there put forward by the like U.S. is pursuing its policy through the IPS, and China is through the BRI. And yes, there is ASEAN, plus plus, and ASEAN is working in an ADMM framework, where every uh, year they are talking about the security and the defense cooperation. And EU is there, and there are many international, these kind of uh, geostrategic policies and the mega policies are going on. And it is hampering each and every country in the, in the BIPSEC region also. So, it is not to make a consensus to counter these policies, but make a balance and, and mixing up, not mixing up with the, our own position and our own capacity, which is capacity of, of which will be, uh, you know, discussed as the capacity of the BIMSEC. The, is this possible for BIMSEC countries to come in a, in a forum, in a, in, a, uh, in a capacity to work on the s soft uh, security issues, and then, of course, the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the movement of the people, and then, and then, and other things. And, and of course, uh, sometimes the dilemma between the, uh, between the state uh, or the traditional security issues or the state operating systems and institutions like defense institutions, military and the marines or paramilitary forces and law, law enforcement agencies how they are coordinating is, is maybe, it is not only remained to the state or the statecraft. It has gone beyond to the, again, as I said, the every individual in the region, to point, like, you know, the one-third of the, uh, one-fifth of the world's population, world population. So there we need a, 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 a cooperation and, well, you know, engaging people and engaging networks, not only at the elite level or the university level, but at the, people those uh, living in the offshores or the indigenous people in the different parts and the protecting technologies and the things have been uh, developed by indigenous groups must be taken into uh, different networks will help us. And gender sensitivity, sensitivity has been discussed yester yesterday and I think that is one of the most prominent issue while you know linking this, uh, this initiative with the SDGs and, and uh, mm -hmm. other related platforms everywhere, uh, you know, taking that, that sector and that uh, issue in the, in the, uh, uh, on board is, will, be, will be something uh, a must, and like having and offering more and more scholarships to the young scholars, young students, uh, in terms of uh, social science and the natural science, which has remained a dominant uh, academic exercise in the region or everywhere, and following, you know, the, all the, uh, academic exercises in the West. So can we uh, depart from that and issue or take forward in the, in the field of the IT and the cyber security or the cybernetics and the, and the area of internet where we can, uh, in 10 or 20 or 30 years down the lane, we can have a, you know, like, you know, the uh, a, a good a quality of uh, generation with, you know, the upper hand in the technology that I think, and, and from my side, sometimes while working in this kind of uh, 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 
conference or like you know the regional security discourse linking institutional memory who people came into the last dialogue and which organizations have worked for one year particularly individually I don't know who were here from Nepal last year who which organizations which members and now this year we are here six people a big delegation next year who will be there is there an institutional or the memory or the link there if there is an app if there is a network we should have a you know, more effective work in even itself or within the secretariat or within uh, BIF and the BIMSTEC mechanism. So that will make the institutional memory and the link and preparations that really can uh, have a more you know, effective a step towards the making regionalism. You know, in terms of uh, the issues we are discussing here, that's one point I want to make. And finally, uh, the only thing is. Uh, what I have been, uh, you know, learning in the uh, and uh, talking about the uh, issues in regional security is more that the pace of uh, uh, framing regionalism is very slow in the region, and Sark has remained in the coma is one story. And if we want to really come out from that hang, <coughs> BIMSTEC, which also seen as a very slow process. And if it is uh, really a need uh, uh, or assessed by the member states, then have to have some uh, deeper cooperation and the deeper pr uh, institutionalized frameworks and where issues are already uh, discussed and some conclusions, not the, like you know the conclusions for uh, that and the particular uh, conference uh, is uh, are drawn can be worked. Uh, really in a, in a tandem way uh, in, in the days to come. Uh, so I think I will stop here. If there is any question or query, I will respond later. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhatt. He, of course, identifies the whole making the process more far more inclusive, and that's where I think the role of think tanks and individual experts are going to play a, a greater role. He also flags off a lot of subjects which have not been under the domain of BIMSTEC, and I think which is relevant for the BIMSTEC countries. And again, I think think tanks and experts here uh, play a dominant role in taking that forward and creating greater awareness and, of course, uh, moving towards some kind of resolution. Uh, and I think that's exactly the point that Dr. Gutta was making about uh, having institutional memory. Uh, like this is meant for regional security. There are several other think tanks. One is working for on media. One is working on the trade and connectivities. So I think each institution on its own, if we build these, uh, you know, group mechanisms, where we can take this forward. And I think that's and I think creating institutional framework. As I said, while they were officially identified think tanks in the origin of BIMSTEC, but over the years we've seen that momentum has taken many other think tanks along with that. And I think that's something that we are trying to build on here at VIF and many other think tanks in India. Uh, over to you, General Basniath. Thank you, Chair, Dr. Uh, Sri Radha Tata. And thank you, uh, VIF Director and the VIF family for inviting me and giving me an opportunity. And uh, it's always good to be back in Delhi in fact, I just saw General Malik later, I think he's, he's left now, a course mate of mine at the National Defense College. So the topic this afternoon is on the cooperation and uh, capacity building within think tanks. So looking at the uh, past, uh, uh, the programs, I mean, the letter C has been coming up very often. Whether Prime Minister Modi ji said the future of vision, the modality is seven C's. So I have noticed that um, the, in the strategic level, three C's have been coming often now. One is committed, collective, and common. And at the operation level, I see another three C's, configuration, capacity, and constitution. So the scope of my presentation is on uh, th three folds. One, I will be talking about where a beamstick lies in these, with the geopolitical re realities. 
and second is the events that has strategic impact, and the third is the way forward. The fourth Bimstick or the Kathmandu Declaration has pri prioritized the strategic importance of nation states of South and Southeast Asia. Let me take the quote of Prime Minister Modi. Quote, I believe that there is a big opportunity for connectivity. See again. Trade connectivity, economic connectivity, transport connectivity, digital connectivity, and people-to-people -people connectivity, unquote. So political and economic institutions, intergovernmental organizations, international organizations, geopolitical unions, and the different architectures have changed either to ma after major wars or desire of nation states for shaping economic and security growth. Like the formation of the League of Nations, which didn't work, International Monetary Fund, GATT, uh, became World Bank, World Trade Organization, World Bank, Intermonetary Fund, and the international body, the UN. The economic, for economic stability, and NATO as the military strength. So this brings to the next last 250 years as the seen as the observed as the American era. The second decade of the 21st century is witnessing the unusual global and great powers diplomatic and geopolitical maneuvering in the Indo-Pacific region which provides a manifesto for either a shift in geopolitics or conflicts in configurating international security. So the magnitude of the Asian order will occupy a fundamental part. So this leads to two questions. One, is China coming up with the SCO as a military alliance, AIIB as the economic tool, and BRI as the economic concept for political influence? Second, for South Asia, when SARC is not functioning as BIMSTEAK for a regional platform, and BIMSTEAK has been as a regional platform that can bring South Asians and East Asians in one forum. So the geostrategic picture, the policies of the United States, the Indo-Pacific, uh, the rising China, resurging Russia, and most importantly, rising India, and the nation states of BIMSTEC will play an important role with the United States uh, strategic arrangements and their policies. The most significant is the policies that India will encompass and BIMSTEC in one of that formed from time again stressed again on the activist policy, playing a linking role for larger Indo-Pacific space, complement to principles, rule of law, and the theory of equality for all nations as part of the general commitments to the liberal international order that as same as developed informal channels visibly against China. BIMSTEC summit occurred while there is an argument that India has lost the, its influence and good and goodwill with the immediate neighbors and the growing China influence. The fourth summit ended with an 18-point declaration. The 14 point plus two priorities are categorized to five and are hand for arrangements. And India's proposal for the seven military BIMSTIC military exercise to strengthen relationship and address common challenges and threats to a newer height. So proceedings and the geopolitical trends, the IPS, second, the BRI with uh, CPEC, BCIM, and the Nepal's northern, northern north-south corridor, which can be termed as the bridge to the Indian Ocean. Revoking of the Article 370, though internal matter has regional and international impacts. SARC being difunctional, and United States and its allies' troops 
withdrawal from Afghanistan. So with these parameters, I have six recommendations or a way forward. Security diplomacy. Steps have been taken for connecting the security chiefs of the law enforcement forces. So in, dis in distinction to political and economic attainment, the unity of security related cooperation to fight common threats and dangers, international terrorism, illicit drug and human trafficking, and mutual legal assistance. In the political level, BIMSTEC Defense Minister's Conference should be held. In the defense diplomacy, chiefs of BIMSTEC uh, of the defense forces, the paramilitary forces, the civil police, and the intelligence units should be held. I argue that the Nepali army chief should have been part of the chiefs or conclave in the first part, in the uh, first part of the BIMSTEC military exercise. Number two, the BIMSTEC to own operational components and mechanisms for information sharing. Information sharing but fundamental is the dissemination of the information and sharing the outcome. The requirements of a core geopolitical mechanism to build a sober and reliable intelligence-based assessment and, on foresee, on, and the forecasts on other key trends and threats to help BIMSTEC nations make informed decisions identify opportunities and anticipate risks. So regional third is the regional networking of think tanks. Providing data evidences and analysis. As we are familiar, mobilizing expertise. Introduce unforeseen challenges. The BIMSTEC Secretariat transparent funding for the think tanks. But what is most important is how and who think tanks influence. Four, identify common BIMSTEC strategies, charters, requirements, measures, and laws that govern member states for confronting challenges like environmental security and counterterrorism that we have been discussing from yesterday. The fifth point is the grouping of the grouping, if agreed, to several measures, including a protocol for coastal shipping agreements, dedicated supply lines would give sea access to the two landlocked countries, Nepal and Bhutan, for supply chain security. And six, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, and Vietnam, and more East Asian nations are likely to board BIMSTEC. This would supplement the Act East policy and the Act West policy. So let me end. So, so tactical mechanisms, means and ways, have a strategic impacts. So again, strategically committed, collective and common at the strategic level and at the operational level, configuration, capacity development, and constitution. Thank you. Uh, thank you, General Basaniyat, for those uh, five, six recommendations. Um, I just wanted to you know, mention here that the Charter of Winstick is actually under discussion. It's been, uh, you know, amongst the think tanks, and there is a think tank network that's actually in place. Uh, though, again, as I said, uh, while ORF and VIF and some others who are actually working with the BIMSTEC process is not part of the formal think tank network, but there is a network in pl pre place, and they do meet on a periodicity of six months, one year. So there is some work in which is actually happening on the other front. I also want to mention here the point you talked about connectivity and how that's certainly relevant. Uh, 
and the previous week also mentioned about how the SARC process was dead. But I just want to also, and some of us, and I think Shahab and I have been part of the process of South Asian Sussex, which is the South Asian Economic Sub-Regional Cooperation, which is alive even today. And several of the sub-regional activities and projects that are undertaken at this South Asian level is actually through that mechanism. <coughs> Uh, with ADB, World Bank, many of them, we've been sitting with them together on several occasions. And despite the fact that while we think at a one level the political association may not be functional, but on trade, logistics, connectivity, transport corridors, this is very much viable. So I'm sure it's possible to replicate similar thing and complement, I think, the BIMSTEC process here. Um, oh, I would now request uh, Mr. Uh, Zilu Rahman from Bangladesh for his presentation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my thanks to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, though I'm working with a think tank, but basically I'm a journalist uh, and half-educated man. We journalists used to know everything, but in most of the cases we don't know anything in depth. Uh, for the last 17 years, uh, as a television talk show host, in a highly politicized society, politically divided society, I have had to practice talk less. My only duty is to question people, not to answer, not to make any comment, and uh, not to answer. Uh, here is my take on the topic, and uh, I will try to finish it before to hear the final bell from the chair. Honorable chair, my fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen. The Bay of Bengal has been an interconnected and interdependent region for centuries. Trade and migrations across borders have made, made the littoral ports and cities culturally diverse and mutually supportive. The geostrategic shift from Euro-Atlantic to Indo-Pacific in recent years has provided the Bay of Bengal region a renewed geopolitical uh, prominence. The region has diverse geographical features from the Himalayan mountain system, transboundary, contiguous mangrove forest of Sundarbans, and a critical marine ecosystem. The natural resources of the region face an increased risk from demographic changes, environmental degradation, and recurring climate change-induced disasters. The increase in frequency and severity of cyclones and recurring uh, cyclones and extreme weather events has resulted in dis displacement of people both within states and across borders. About 30 million Bangladesh people are projected to be at risk of becoming climate migrants by 2050. In the last decade, the Bay of Bengal littorals have lost 3,70,000 lives and resources worth nearly 59 billion US dollars to disasters. Addressing these transboundary threats would exceed the capacity of single country and require collective efforts at the regional level. The region is home to 22% of the global population nearly half of which are poor and categorized as food and energy deficient. Over 400 million people live on the base coastal catchment that is vulnerable to sea level rise. Subsequent environmental impacts on development sectors such as falling agricultural yields, lower level of productivity and related health impacts are likely to severely constrain the capacity of the countries to cope with such stress. Securing energy supply to support sound economic growth in the region is also a major concern. Under preparedness of the countries and lack of success to develop cooperative mechanisms to deal with the challenges would amplify risks even further. Bay of Bengal countries are also grappling with various security challenges. Countries of the region, such as Bangladesh and India, have faced terror attacks in the past decade. Incidences of terror and Escalating violence due to humanitarian crises, such as in Myanmar, have threatened peace and stability in the region. Transboundary security issues like cyber crimes and illegal trafficking have become equally challenging in the region. The scale and pace of these challenges demand sustained efforts to cooperation. However, an effective regional cooperation to address the transboundary challenges would first require greater integration through enhanced connectivity. The need for improving the state of connectivity both within a country and across borders have fostered sub-regional connectivity through projects such as the Shagormala project, the Asia-Africa Growth Corridor, and ASEAN's New Western, and the Master Plan of ASEAN's Connectivity 2025. 
Similarly, ceiling corridors and maritime connectivity have been proposed by endorsing maritime shipping agreements and coastal shipping agreements between Bangladesh and India. While efforts are in progress, yet the region remains one of the world's least integrated with low levels of connectivity. The Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation, BIMSTEC, formed in 2004, has been an important step forward in recognizing the need for collectively addressing the geopolitical and development challenges in the region. A series of meetings and high-level forums have been held over the past decade to discuss greater integration of the Bay of Bengal. However, the potentials of BIMSTEC are yet to be materialized. While efforts are underway for the revival of BIMSTEC, institutional framework for addressing the challenges in the region have remained weak. There is a need, therefore, a sustained dialogue among scholars, practitioners, and policymakers to identify and deliberate on various challenges confronting the, regi confronting the region, identify mechanisms to address those and evolve new frameworks for cooperation. As a formal political channel through which regions work together, the BIMSTEC therefore remains a useful refer reference point in order to understand the role non-state actors can play restructuring the, restructuring the institutions, cooperation and capacity building within the BIMSTEC states. The aim of the strategic partnership between the countries is to promote common interest in different areas from economic development to sustainable development in particular. The partnership aims to strengthen political relations between the beam stake states through essential cooperation in migration, the environment, peace and security, trade and regional cooperation. It is precisely within such a framework that one can envision a strategic role for think tanks and policy research organizations in strengthening the beam stake. This is clear from officially documented meetings as key areas for cooperation have presumed an enhancement of political dialogues, research cooperation, people-to-people -people exchanges, and so on. The role of policy experts as key mediators or policy entrepreneurs through regional workshops, conferences, joint research projects, and summits should not and cannot therefore be underestimated. There is a need to distinguish different types of organization and different kinds of people in charge of policy research in BIMSEC countries. Think tanks can exercise power through discursive pra practices, nevertheless, efforts by regional think tanks to establish inter-regional dialogues and common ground for research on regional cooperation is limited in comparison with other inter-regional contexts, such as think tank dialogues and summits surrounding EU-China and China-US relations. The main reason for this sh should be contextualized by the limited internationalization of think tanks in this region in parallel with what could be defined as an inward-looking approach to policy research and expertise. The main policy areas in which BIMSTEC states think tanks are involved, both in the private sector and the civil society domain, are economic growth and development, peace and security, regional integration and trade, national sector strategies and long-term national visions, sustainable growth through financing for development, and greater investment in social and innovative sectors. To us, to me, BIMSTEC countries think tanks major roles, current developments, and most ser serious challenges. BIMSTEC states think tanks perform different functions among which they help policymakers to better understand how to shape BIMSTEC countries' institutions through regional cultural identity, strategies as to how to best include women and younger generations in discussions about the future of the region, maximize the role technology can play in social development. The development of BIMSTEC states major political institutions and the projection of its international relations with third parties are heavily constrained by the opportunities academics, experts, and intellectuals have to affect policy outcomes. <coughs> Considering the political landscape in this region is one able to properly understand the policy context in which think tanks operate. In the past decades, the political development of BIMSTEC countries' institutions has been shaped by different historical phases from the era of colonialism and post-independence movements to single party rule up to the rise of authoritarianism and just more recently, political and economic liberalization. To this list of influences, we must add other two political phenomena that have marked the developments of BIMSTEC states think tanks. The concentration of power in the hands of a few individuals and the external influence exercised by the both states and non-state actors of the where the BIMSTEC political community has taken major decisions over the course of different decades. 
my specific recommendations to improve the future performance of Beamstick countries' think tanks, among which the most important are mobilizing of financial resources, developing effective st strategies to reach policy makers and achieve policy impact, harnessing the use of technology, increasing research capacity, and last but not least, strengthening attention at both domestic and international levels on the Beamstick agenda. Think tanks could become the standard setters and arbiters of quality 21st century policy analysis. I'll stop here and I'll back to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rahman. Thank you for identifying these issues. And I think the point that is really the crux is uh, the, you know, how do we mobilize the funds for this? And I think that's again where the internet domain comes in very handy. And I think that while there's a platform that's been established, it'll be easy for us to stay in touch and improve on each other and you know the capacity building can improve through that media too. So it's, I mean, I think we'll have to take it beyond the governmental support and take it at different layers to take this forward. Uh, can I now request my colleague from Bhutan, Mr. Sering Penjur, for his presentation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, honorable chair, I bring to you uh, love, peace, good wishes, and happiness from the Kingdom of Bhutan. I must uh, say that I'm really honored and privileged to be the part of the second uh, BIMSTEC Think Tech dollar, and and I. I must uh, say here that uh, it's been a wonderful experience uh, sitting as an audience and learning a lot of things uh, being shared by different uh, presenters. I don't know whether I'll do justice as one of the panel members this afternoon, uh, but uh, I may not really have a good structure to whatever I'm going to present, but maybe some random thoughts and uh, some humble submissions. Uh, I do hope you find uh, meaning in it. Uh, before I forget, I would li also like to thank uh, Dr. Gupta and uh, Bimstek and all the people who were involved in uh, making this uh, event a uh, memorable one. Now we have seen the last two days, we have seen a lot of discussions uh, and uh, I was trying to you know, uh, seriously note down all important things that came up and uh, some of the things that I'm going to say just now would be on uh, the, the reflections on uh, whatever has been uh, delivered. Yesterday we have seen uh, uh, our panel members talk about uh, internet and social media being used as a tool for radicalization. I think this is something Bhutan is not worried at the moment. Uh, we do have people, a lot of people uh, using social media and the fear of uh, the people of Bhutan is that it might uh, you know, create division in, the, in, in, in our country. We are a very small nation of 700,000 people but we are spread across uh, our nation in the, you know, we have the eastern, western, southern, central and the northern bloc. And our genuine concern is, uh, uh, you know, some section of the uh, society might create a division in our country, which is something uh, we are all very seriously concerned. We cannot make this happen. We cannot let this happen in a small country like ours. And, uh, it was uh, uh, very interesting to, you know, uh, listen to the panel members yesterday. Uh, I think uh, we are talking about how think tanks can contribute to strengthening BIMSTEC. And I think it's evident from whatever we have heard the last two days. And most of them come from think tanks and the research findings. And, uh, you know, uh, probably I do hope that uh, these findings are uh, helping our government to uh, make some decisions, policy decisions. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, Facebook uh, being used as, um, I mean, uh, as to spread hate mass messages, I think that's uh, something very prominent, especially in Bhutan when we have the uh, the campaigns going on, and uh, but. The good thing that the government of Bhutan does is as soon as the government is formed, uh, all the members of the parliament, they stand uh, to you know, resolve this issue. Uh, they don't call uh, the government by their party's name. It's just the government of Bhutan and uh, there's no party affiliation once they 
uh, they, they are in the government. And uh, I think uh, from uh, whatever uh, data and uh, uh, information that we receive from the think tanks are definitely uh, going to play a very crucial role in addressing some of these issues. Uh, we have also seen uh, uh, a participant, uh, a delegation from Nepal, passionately, uh, you know, raising the concerns of uh, uh, the two landlocked countries. And uh, sometimes uh, I, I felt that, you know, the discussions can seem uh, alien to the landlocked countries, especially when you talk about the blue economy. And uh, because uh, both of us, Nepal and Bhutan, we are not involved directly in any of the sea or ocean activities. The question here is how do we uh, st stay relevant to the discussions? I think uh, BIMSTEC can t uh, take this uh, discussion forward and even uh, we can have think tanks talk more on it and uh, study on you know, providing routes for landlocked countries to ensure that the Bay of Bengal provides uh, that cushion for us to be you know, the part of the blue economy. And uh, we have heard India, India mention about, about its intent to leave no one behind in the region and that we take pride uh, in the growth of uh, the countries in this region you know, to sail together. And uh, personally, I think uh, uh, this can be the slogan for BIMSTEC, to leave no one behind. And uh, I, I do not really know if we have a slogan at the moment for BIMSTEC. I think uh, we need to also look at uh, a stick, sticky slogan that all of us can connect to it and uh, work uh, in you know, trying to fulfilling whatever visions that we have laid forward. The, the other thing that I want to uh, mention about is, uh, I think this has been talked in the past uh, conferences also, about you know, investing in strengthening the BIMSTEC uh, Secretariat, you know, empowering the uh, Secretariat with greater human resources, financial resources, so that they can proactively you know, drive the agendas. No? We can also think about provide, providing them greater autonomy and uh, you know, uh, delegate responsibilities. I think the think tank's role here would be to see what what good roles we can play in strengthening the secretariat. And uh, we do definitely look at India's leadership uh, in you know, uh, you know, uh, large funding the large portion of uh, the uh, BIMSTEC's budget, and. Uh, for me, I think uh, leadership is very crucial, and uh, even the leadership at BIMSTEC, Secretariat, and the think tanks, uh, institutions, I think they, we would all together play a very big role in taking forward uh, uh, this organization. I was thinking whether you know, there could be a, a platform where you know, think tanks can come together and you know, design a module on leadership that can be you know, provided to the, the people in a position of leaderships in the think tanks as well as in the BIMSTEC secretariat. Uh, talking about uh, uh, leadership, uh, I must mention that I come from a leadership training institute in Bhutan. As, the, as our chair mentioned earlier, we have very limited uh, think tanks in Bhutan. In fact, I think prominently only two, RICS and the CBS. But we do have a uh, research wing attached to many of the agencies. So they do independent researches. And uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, there's a conflict of uh, data being you know, uh, received from many agencies. So that's something that uh, uh, we are looking at, you know, improving uh, collection of data. And also we are also talking about uh, data democratization at the moment. So. Uh, in the past uh, six years, I think, as a leadership institute, uh, we have uh, provided uh, training, leadership training programs to, you know, uh, to the bureaucrats, uh, starting from the secretaries, the director, chief level, 
and uh, we are also targeting the mid-level and the foundation level uh, civil servants and even the, the, the for people in the corporate and private sectors. So I think we have acquired enough uh, skills and resources in providing uh, leadership courses and uh, I am also hopeful that there are uh, some institutions like this in the region and I was thinking that we can come together and see of uh, you know, f forming a module that will uh, basically look into taking forward uh, a BIMSTEC agenda to the next higher level. So I thought uh, that, would s that would be something that we can uh, work on. On the climate change, uh, a couple of weeks week ago, I was here in Delhi. I think that was during the time of Diwali celebration. The air pollution was, it was at its peak and the government had to declare it as an emergency. Some school, I think schools were also closed. And that I met one Indian friend and uh, no, he said, we have a lot of uh, rich people here, uh, hundreds, of, hundreds and thousands of uh, rich people here in India. He paused for a moment and then he said, so what? They are not happy, we are not happy because we are breathing the same air. And I, I felt that you know, that was a very strong statement. Uh, uh, I think uh, that also determines the quality of life uh, that you lead. You know, whether you have a lot of money or whether you don't have any money, the fact is that you are breathing the same air, which is uh, you know, a lot of pollutants. So uh, I think yesterday Dr. Gupta also talked about uh, a collaborative approach uh, between the climate change institutions uh, in the region. And I was surprised to hear that there are 50 plus such institutions in India. In Bhutan, we just have one, that that's uh, National Environment Commission, I think who, who actually is uh, uh, the main uh, body taking care of our climate change uh, uh, the situations in our country. And similarly, I do hope that uh, there are a lot of such institutions in the region. And I think it's uh, a very good proposal to you know, come together because it's uh, everybody's concern. Uh, you can just ask questions like, can BIMSTEC region be champion of uh, climate change uh, you know, initiative? And uh, if so, who do we look up to in the region? We have also uh, heard people talk about sustainable economy, low carbon economy, and the question really is, who do we look up to as an example? I know that uh, the, some of you who visited Bhutan would have uh, felt and seen the, the condition in our country. We have 70% as my colleague uh, mentioned yesterday, 70% uh, of the landmass under forest coverage. Clean air, that's something that you will you know, feel and sense as soon as you land in Paro Airport. We have clean rivers, uh, you can see through actually, and even see the fishes in the river. Like if you go to Punakha and you stand on the bridge and look down, you can actually see the fish, uh, movement of fish under the bridge. And uh, that, that's something we are proud of because our rivers are very clean. All the policies uh, uh, that we have in our country are screened through the uh, GNH uh, screening tools to ensure that uh, climate, uh, you know, climate environment pro pro uh, protection conservation is taken care. And uh, as I said, uh, NEC stands as a very strong body. Though we have just one institute, I institution, but I think they are doing a wonderful job in Bhutan. Uh, I think I'm running out of time. Uh, just, just one proposal, I think yesterday one panel member also suggested that we do away with this uh, plastic bottles uh, in the next BIMSTEC conference. I think these are small things that we can, practical, doable things uh, that all of us can take forward. So no matter where, where we, uh, you know, held conferences, BIMSTEC conferences, to ensure, because we are all talking about climate change, and the small, uh, you know, changes like this could uh, go a long way in, you know, making ourselves uh, an example to other organizations. So next time, like, let's say, we will not see the plastic bottles, we will not see the plastic cups. So maybe these are small things that we can uh, 
do at the BIMSTEC. And finally, uh, maybe the last, uh, last thing, uh, we have input on something called as GNH of business. So it, it was a tool designed by CBS and uh, you know now they have uh, made the tool and they have also invited uh, companies in Bhutan to you know run through the test and to see where they fall in the GNH business model. So I think that's a very uh, excellent tool, I would say, but I don't know whether uh, people in the region are aware, aware about this. Maybe you could uh, have a look at it and see if this is something that uh, can be incorporated in the region, you know, modify it into your needs and uh, uh, situations there. Uh, but I personally feel that if the companies go through this, uh, uh, you know, test, they can actually really identify uh, whether their business is doing well, not only in terms of making money, but in, uh, you know, other aspects of environmental conservation, you know, welfare programs and other social aspects. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Penjor. Uh, I'm sorry I had to kind of rush you, but, uh, um, you know, it's, I'm not sure whether we have a slogan here about to leave no one behind, and I think that's possible that we could bring that onto our charter when we're discussing that. And I, um, I think all of us in the region and outside look at Bhutan for the GNH tool, that particular tool that you have. Uh, while you also have advantage that you're able to implement that, many of us, which includes Bangladesh and India specifically in this film, we have large unwieldy population. It's difficult, you know, given the thing, but I'm sure all of us would learn a lot from the GNH uh, tools that you have and we could uh, take that forward. Uh, you mentioned uh, about strengthening the secretariat and I think that's something, you know, and I'm going to request Mr. Hazarika, who's going to be the next speaker to, you know, focus on the points that he also said about the autonomy, the strengthening, and you know how more means the secretariat could lead the way. I think that's what he was suggesting. The leadership should come from the secretariat. Over to you, Mr. Zarek. Thank you, madam. Uh, I don't have a very uh, structured kind of presentation, so I'll be touching few issues uh, which the delegates have discussed over the course of two days. Uh, starting with uh, the issue of a slogan. We don't have a slogan yet, but if you look at the last summit declaration. The theme was towards a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable Bay of Bengal region. So that was the theme of last Bimstick Summit. Now coming to the issue of uh, some of the issues concerning institutional reforms. Uh, in the last uh, summit, the direction was that the Bimstick Secretariat will prepare a preliminary draft of the Bimstick Charter, which we have done and have also circulated among the member states. And that was discussed uh, in October this year in Colombo, and we could finalize, in fact, most of the articles of that uh, BIMSTEC charter. And hopefully, uh, in the next uh, ministerial meeting of BIMSTEC that is supposed to take place in Sri Lanka, probably in February and March, we'll be able to freeze the BIMSTEC charter so that this can be approved by the fifth BIMSTEC summit that is again going to be held in Colombo maybe later this year. So the BIMSTEC charter is more or less uh, we have uh, taken care of. Then. Uh, there are some other mechanism for establishment of BIMSTEC Permanent Working Committee, uh, which have been established. Uh, this is basically a committee comprising the Joint Secretary of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and External Affairs Ministry of the member states. And so far, they had two rounds of discussion on various agenda of uh, BIMSTEC. Then uh, another issue was uh, the rules of procedure for BIMSTEC. It was also drafted by the Secretariat and given to the member states, but uh, there was a decision that once the BIMSTEC charter is finalized, then further discussion or rules or procedure will take place. Uh, then uh, the issue of BIMSTEC Development Fund, there was a proposal from the leaders for establishing a BIMSTEC Development Fund. In fact, the Secretariat has uh, circulated a note uh, uh, you know, on the working of uh, how this uh, BIMSTEC Development Fund should be created, uh, the funding sources, the, the modalities. So we're waiting for the response from the member states. In fact, we have written a note to all the member states if somebody can you know, hold a meeting of the intergovernmental expert group of financial experts so that before the next summit, we can take a, we can take a, complete, you know, a concrete decision uh, on establishment of the BIMSTEC Development Fund. Since this is the uh, decision of the leaders, uh, so before the next summit, uh, in a summit, we will have to present a clear picture on this. So we have been working on this. Then coming to the, uh, this uh, enhancement of institutional capacity of the BIMSEC Secretariat, in fact, when the Secretariat was established in Dhaka in 2014, we had one Secretary General and three Directors 
all on rotational basis. But in the last summit, it was decided that uh, all seven countries will have one on director in the secretariat. So far, we have five directors, uh, and a director from Sri Lanka will be joining next year, and director from Thailand will be joining in 2021. There was a decision taken uh, because, you know, we thought of having it in a staggered way, so that there is no financial burden all of a sudden on the member states. So, uh, and the government of Bangladesh uh, uh, is, uh, you know, exploring to have, uh, you know, construct a new building in the existing structure, uh, multi-street building, so that we have a proper kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, establishment in place. Then uh, there was also a decision given by the summit uh, for having uh, international collaboration uh, with other, you know, international organizations. Uh, and we have taken initiative in this regard. Uh, in fact, the Secretary has drafted a note uh, for having an MOU with um, ADB. That MOU has almost been finalized. We have got the concurrence from the member states. Uh, so we'll hope to sign the MOU by early next year once the ministerial meeting approves that. We're also working with the UN agencies. Uh, in fact, we have a meeting with UNOCT next week. Then we have got proposal from OECD, from IMF, from World Bank, from USAID, from SERI. So there are different organizations who have been willing to work with uh, ADB, uh, to, uh, with BIMSTEC. We are also getting uh, lots of you know, uh, the, um, interest from US government, from the UK. In fact, the British High Commissioner was there in the, our office last week. Uh, they had a discussion with the Secretary General and the Directors. So uh, uh, we are getting lots of you know, uh, visibility there to a prominence. Uh, then coming to one very important aspect, that is the rationalization of BIMSTEC sector. So far, we have got 14 sectors. So if you leave aside maybe uh, connectivity and uh, CTDC cooperation, and uh, maybe disaster management, many other um, energy and agriculture, other sectors are not uh, moving very well. So uh, in the last summit, uh, the th uh, Prime Minister from Bangladesh, uh, 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 she suggested if there could be three clusters, one is a security cluster, one is a uh, sustainable development cluster, and one could be on people-to-people -people contact cluster. Similarly, uh, from Thailand, there was a proposal if uh, the 14 sectors could be merged you know, into five sectors, trade, connectivity, security, technology, and people-to-people -people contact. But from the secretary side, we have again circulated a note to the member states. If instead of three or five, if it could be seven, since we'll be having seven directors, there are seven countries, each sector can be led by one country. So this proposal was considered by uh, the BIMSTEC Permanent Working Committee, uh, the meeting held in Colombo in October. So uh, by uh, next summit, this proposal will also be, I think we'll have a concrete, clear idea how the rationalization of sectors will take place. Then coming to a few of the issues uh, which have been also raised by some of the member states, particularly on the issue of uh, uh, blue economy. In fact, from the Secretariat, again, we have drafted a concept note on blue economy because we know it is a subject, uh, uh, it's a difficult subject in the sense there are so many ministries and departments that do the involve. In fact, we have uh, found out nearly 15 to 16 uh, departmental ministries will be involved in the expert group meeting on blue economy. But uh, now we are very happy uh, that Bangladesh government has come out uh, with a proposal to hold the first meeting of the expert group before March 2020. So that will be the first meeting of the expert group where we'll be uh, discussing trade beer, the issues of blue economy in the BIMSTEC countries. Then there was also a proposal for uh, you know, direction from the leaders to have an intergovernmental expert group on disaster management. So this meeting will take place on 14th of February, uh, next uh, immediately after the second BIMSTEC disaster management exercise in Puri. Uh, so this exercise will take place from 13, 11 to 13th February and this um, expert group meeting will take place on 14th. Uh, similarly, on uh, climate change, uh, so lead country happens to be uh, Bangladesh at this point of time, and what we know, they have been working on a proposal to have a meeting of the intergovernmental expert group. And there's also some issue raised on the issue of migration. Yes, migration is one of the subjects. Um, in fact, uh, in CDTC, we have got uh, six subgroups, and one of the subgroup is a subgroup on uh, illegal migration and um, uh, human trafficking. So uh, we, are, uh, we have to have the first meeting of the subgroup. Uh, there are some technical issues we have been finally further discussing. But yes, the migration issues we are uh, duly considering. Then there was also issue of information sharing that has been raised by various delegates you know, uh, at different, uh, different sessions. In fact, uh, we have a, um, uh, under CTTC, we have a subgroup on uh, information sharing. The least safe part for this subgroup happens to be Sri Lanka. In fact, uh, there was a proposal to have an uh, you know, uh, kind of a uh, database of our, you know, of in, for this. 
So, uh, there was a concept note, a note we have uh, Sri Lanka circulated, we have got the comments, and hopefully we'll have an expert group meeting in Sri Lanka soon to decide on the modalities of information sharing. So, we are working on that also. Then, uh, coming to uh, uh, some issues like expansion and observer, you know, some uh, delegates have spoken about that. Uh, in fact, if you look at the definition of very definition of, uh, no, not definition, exactly the criteria of uh, BIMSTEC membership. It says uh, any country having an opening to Bay of Bengal or to the Andaman Sea or economically dependent on the Bay of Bengal could be a member of BIMSTEC. So uh, though Bhutan and Nepal, they, are, they don't have opening to the Bay of Bengal, just uh, since they are economically dependent for the trade and other things with the Bay of Bengal, so they are also part of BIMSTEC. So, uh, uh, in fact, uh, in the BIMSTEC charter, that uh, when the process of finalization, uh, these issues will be probably addressed there. Then, uh, uh, coming to uh, the issue of, uh, I think, these uh, think tanks uh, specifically. In fact, uh, we have a mechanism called BNPTT, BIMSTEC Network of Policy Think Tanks. In fact, there was also a proposal of establishing um, uh, eminent persons group called EPZ. But uh, what we have uh, found out uh, subsequent to the fourth summit, uh, due to various directions uh, and uh, no instructions particularly given to the secretariat, many of the uh, terms of reference which we are proposing earlier for EPG, we thought those are no longer as such relevant. So maybe uh, instead of having a permanent EPG, we may have an ad hoc EPG for doing studies on specific cases. Now coming to uh, the issue of uh, no, BIMSTEC network of policy think tanks, uh, yes, we know this is a group of, uh, no, this is a, no, there are seven think tanks which have been nominated by the respective member countries. Now uh, we have also these regional think tanks on the security issues. Uh, and as far as uh, the decision of the third um, uh, NSA meeting, this is going to be annual affair now. This is going to be going to take place every year, uh, maybe hosted in any of the member states. So yes, this is an issue. We need to have some kind of synergy between the BNPTT, BNPTT and also the BIMSTEC think tanks uh, dialogue on regional security. Uh, because uh, as per the in terms of reference, which we have been now as of now, so we, probably there is no kind of differentiation whether this is a security subject, trade subject, connectivity subject. Everything is there uh, in, uh, in the mandate. So this is one issue. Then uh, some. Uh, uh, somebody spoke about, uh, you know, some of the conventions. In fact, uh, we have got two uh, conventions on CTDC matter. One is the BIMSTEC Convention on Cooperation in Combating International Terrorism, Transnational Organized Crime, and Illicit Drug Trafficking. And that convention has been ratified by six countries, uh, so pending ratification by one more country. If that is done, we have the convention in place. Then the BIMSTEC Convention on Mutual Legal Assistance in Criminal Matters, uh, that has been uh, uh, yet to be signed, but all countries have given their concurrence to the text. So in the next, uh, early uh, next year in the ministerial meeting, we hope to sign the uh, convention. So these are few of the things I thought I'll just highlight here. If there are anything subsequent in the question or answer session, I would like to take that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hazarika. I think there's a plethora of information that you shared with us, and I think many of the things were not in our uh, you know, awareness. Only one request is that your secretariat website is very outdated. Yeah, if okay. you could please put all this there, so many of us working on the, uh, you know, subject in the region would actually benefit from so many things that's actually happening. And we are here feeling that, you know, there's hardly any movement. Actually, there's so much that's happening. Uh, in fact, I'll just reply the uh, mm -hmm. question straight away here. In fact, uh, I am also in charge of the BIMSTEC secretariat. Now, BIMSTEC secretariat is a very small organization. In fact, I am here now, and my PA is on leave. So the complete, uh, yes. So the complete connectivity and security division is out of the secretariat because it comprises only two persons, myself and my PA. So many of the documents what I have referred to, those are drafted by me, my and my secretary general ourselves. We have been drafting those documents, whatever we know. So uh, we have already given a uh, contract to a firm to develop the BIMSTEC website. And by 1st of January, we want to have the new website. In fact, we had, a, in fact, just before coming for this meeting, uh, so I had a, meet, a discussion with the vendor. I wanted to see what work has been done, how the template has been developed. So we want to fill the template, and then we'll give all the inputs. Because I know it because uh, I think that uh, the software that we are using, the tool, these are not compatible as of now. So we are going for PSP, and so that, you know, it's easier for us to work on that. 
So by 1st of January, we'll have the new website ready. And we hope that you'll all like, like the website. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll open up the floor for another 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, less than that. OK, 10 minutes. Yeah, we will see. OK. So OK, 10 minutes, I think so. Whatever, I think. If in case there are any. OK, I can see one hand. All right. OK, I can see a two. So we'll. Thank you, panel. Uh, my uh, only question is like the world has already stepped into the fourth industrial revolution and I think that now BIMSTEC should uh, also board that bus because if we get late in that then we, we, we will be just, we won't be able to catch that. So what the panel think and what role can think tank do in helping that the BIMSTEC countries because technology is one area where everyone wants to be especially the small country like Nepal and Bhutan. So my point is like what role can think tank play in help in getting into the fourth revolution? Thank you. I just have a brief point. Uh, we have it. Uh, I mean, we are talking about the I mean global level as well as regional level how to address these issues. Particularly, particularly when we talk about these four issues. Also, global recommendations, particularly the UN has the mechanisms in terms of uh, cybersecurity. They have group of uh, governmental experts uh, in terms of uh, climate change. They are talking about IPCC. And IPCC also recommended that regional response is necessary. Mm -hmm. And if I can remember, in uh, one of the SARC summit and SARC countries agreed for regional, uh, common regional response in the global negotiations. So when you talk about regional level, uh, it is also, uh, we have, uh, we are aware that global response is also necessary. So in global debates, can we develop a framework, uh, re regional countries can raise common voice in the global negotiations. Thank you. I think it was uh, wonderful to hear Mr. Pank Pankaj Hazarika, who stole uh, thunder from everybody. Because we thought that we will tell him something, he has told us a lot. So <laughs> I wish we would have made him speak in the beginning. But what I wanted to tell was that, you see, once you put it in the domain, actually, when everybody can access it, you could also point out certain areas where you would require some amount of a help from the think tanks. Because think tanks are the creatures. They can go into the areas where the angels fear to tread. You see, we can always uh, talk about things which the official representatives being diplomats would like to put it diplomatically. We can put it bluntly. So I think those areas in different uh, contexts you could think about. Second point I thought was that we talked about the uh, regional security and we talked about also the cyber security, etc. I am of the view that next time when we come here, let's analyze the failures. Because what happens is that Every country, and I'm not talking any from a patronizing manner, irrespective of our size, have failed somewhere. Be it the regional security, be it the, be it the cyber security, be it anything else, be it a tackling of a, a violent uh, extremist sort of a episode. We tend to hide it. You see, we tend to cover it. But what happens is that if you share as to what happened, what went wrong, for example, I'll give you, we had an attack on Mumbai. We analyzed it. And but we, at, at the moment, people have written books on it, Europeans, Americans. Some of we, we have not shared what went wrong. And except some sensitive things we should share. Because each one of you who's near a sea realizes that the coast is a very vulnerable area. Because the coast is not only blue economy, it's the actual economy. Our best of the industrial bases are next to the coast because of the obvious reasons. And we have suffered it, so we realize how sensitive the coastal security is. Similarly, the bank, as you mentioned, in Bangladesh. So you see, we could learn if supposing we went through it. And an episode of a violent extremist sort of a, uh, 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 this thing, once again, what happened? How did it sort of... Uh, why was it not detected? What could be done to see that it is detected? So things like that in the blue economy you mentioned, we went wrong somewhere. The mangroves in Bom Mumbai were, were removed somewhere. 
the, and the member of parliament talked about in Bangladesh. So those are the areas we could talk about rather than, you know, patting each other on the back. So some episodes from where we can learn and those can be fed to the secretary. That is my. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is a question more uh, addressed for, for the panel and uh, Mr. Hazarika in particular. One of the problems which we face when we uh, interact with uh, the Bimstick states uh, comes up of language and especially language is an advantage. Uh, in some cases, uh, we have a lot of commonality, but in some cases, uh, uh, for example, we don't have so much of expertise as in uh, Sinhala, Myanmar, or even Zongha. So is the BIMSTEC at some stage looking at setting up some kind of a BIMSTEC regional language school, or is there a school of thought which says that we need to interact more on these lines? Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll take the uh, one uh, question. Uh, starting from uh, this uh, uh, rule of think tank, uh, next sir has raised the issue. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have been uh, doing some studies with the assistance of ADB, uh, and we are uh, going to take, uh, no, have uh, three more studies, or something on tourism potential in the BIMSEC region on trade facilitation and financing of connectivity projects. And uh, this financing in the sense what we want is for projects which are kind of, you know, between two countries, not a you know, inter internal project. If there's a project, I'm project going from connectivity from here to suppose Kathmandu, some part falling in Nepal, some part falling in India, how this kind of projects can be done without any slippages. So some of those studies. Now, uh, one of the questions generally being asked to us is, when there are so many studies in different areas, why do you need studies specific to BIMSTEC? Now, the issue is when you need to uh, look for any data in the web on BIMSTEC, either you get data for ASEAN, you get data for SARC, you got for South Asia or got for Southeast Asia. For BIMSTEC, we don't have any ready-made data. So when somebody asks us the trade figure or any anything, we have to browse through the net, go to uh, the you know, WTO side or World Bank side, ADB side, get the data, interpolate, extrapolate, and find out some figure. So we said we need to have some concrete data which is specific to BIMSTEC. So these are some other things. In fact, uh, last yesterday also some delegates spoke about you know, having evidence-based you know, data. Uh, I think the Sri Lankan uh, presenter, she spoke about that. We need to have data specific to BIMSTEC. Uh, you know, when we think BIMSTEC as a very, you know, uh, evolving uh, regional organization, we need to have some, this data specific to BIMSTEC and think tank can definitely work on this particular area. Then coming to the issue of force industrial revolution, uh, issue uh, which has been spoken, see, uh, all the countries at their respective level are working on the issue of 5G, artificial intelligence, all the things. But when you look at BIMSTEC, we should be, you know, Again, coming to another point, which one of the delegates spoke yesterday, we should be slow on incremental basis. Reason being, if you look at the world, I think we have got around 47 odd countries which are LDCs. Out of that, seven are in Asia. Out of that, four are in BIMSTEC. So we have to take, and uh, that, uh, my colleague fra, from Bhutan said, leaving no one behind. So when we are talking of BIMSTEC, uh, you know, with a slogan of leaving no one behind, we have to uh, think all the issues. So when it comes to you know having a proper deliberation on the fourth uh, you know issue of uh, this uh, industrial revolution, definitely we'll have those discussions. We'll, uh, we'll have that. But at the level of think tanks and other you know uh, at different forum, I'm sure uh, you can have deliberations and you can just like the recommendations here. You can come out some recommendations on these areas. Then under issue of uh, coastal security, I think that has been raised. Uh, in fact, we had the first BIMSTEC coastal security workshop only last week in, uh, in the same hotel where we were staying. So uh, we have uh, emphasized on some of the issues, and in fact, that issue was also raised in the first BIMSTEC post conclave that was held in Visakhapatnam again early this year. So uh, we are talking about this issue now uh, in a you know, greater level. Very soon, hopefully, we'll have some kind of you know, a clear idea in this regard how to go about. Then regarding the Bangladesh Bank, I think uh, what I understand is, uh, I have attended these meetings, we have a subgroup on anti money laundering and competing financing of terrorism. Uh, the last meet, uh, in 2018, the meeting was held in Kathmandu, and subsequently in 2019, the meeting was held in Bangkok. In both these meetings, the person who came from Bangladesh Bank and BFIU, uh, Bangladesh Financial Intelligence Unit, 
they spoke a trade bear how no, the whole issue. So yes, there are a mistake forum. We have been discussing these issues uh, uh, like that. So uh, it's not that we're not, they're not discussing, but we have been discussing this uh, this area, these issues. Now coming to language, yes, uh, I remember the first time the issue of language we have discussed was when we are discussing the negotiating the Bimstek Motor Vehicle Agreement in 2000 and 2018, February, April. So uh, if a driver goes from a Bimstek country, one country to another, the kind of language barrier he will be facing. So in that context, for the first time we spoke about the issue of language, but the suggestion that you have given seems to be a good suggestion. Uh, maybe if you can record it here, if you wish to record it, or maybe at any other time, I'm sure uh, it will be definitely a good one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hazarika. That was very, very illuminating for all of us. But I'm really upset that you didn't open your conference bag because then you would have seen that our younger colleagues actually put in some statistics and data about just specific to BIMSTEC. Uh, this is something that Dr. Gupta has drilled into all of us, having data and statistics on yes. our fingertips. And this is a work in progress, and I'm absolutely confident that the younger lot can take this forward and you know build here. And I think we would really start away right away. And th th there's already a work in progress for us. Um, I think I'll close in here. Uh, do any of the one speakers? I don't think any last minute. Okay, <coughs> sure. I mean, as, as we were uh, uh, talking about the blue economy and the landlocked countries, um, hoping that it's not a fake news, as agreed by the two prime ministers, uh, Prime Minister Modi ji and uh, Oli ji. Uh, so the Joint Secretary level body has. Um, um, Draft, agreed to draft that the Nepalese ships for cargo can be can use three waterways uh, to to Nepal. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll close in here. I didn't think we don't need to. Remember. Thank you all for your extremely uh, good presentations. Thank you very much. Uh, I remain uh, everyone uh, to get remain seated. Uh, we will uh, directly move on uh, to the valedictory session so that uh, once we finish, uh, then we will uh, break for lunch. Uh, may I now request uh, Dr. Arvind Gupta and uh, Mr. Pankaj Hazarika, who's already here, um, and uh, the chairs from all the previous sessions to please come on the dais for a final summing up and uh, 